You know, I think Mizuno changed the game in 2023 when they released the Wave Rebellion Pro. Well now, in 2024, they have taken it a step further. They have gone and released the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 and they've made it even faster. Are you ready to run fast? Let's get into it. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Matt B and I want to get some disclosures out of the way first. Mizuno was good enough to send me a pair of the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 for the purpose of review. However, they don't have any editorial input into this video and all the thoughts and opinions are my own. So let's get going with price. Mizuno has kept the same price as the original Wave Rebellion Pro and the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 will cost you $250. Now before we get into all the specs and the ride of the shoe, let's just talk about a couple of non-shoe things and that's this box. Do you know what? There are little things that just make your experience of getting a new pair of running shoes a little better. And I was pretty impressed with this box. Now let me open it and I'll show you that there is two different compartments, one for each shoe. You see that? I don't know why that tickled me, but it did. I like it. When we're spending $250 on a pair of shoes, I want them to have their own little garage. They don't want to share the same space as their brother. I'm also really loving this box colorway. Now look, I realize that this could go down into history as the most ridiculous part of any shoe review when I'm talking about the box colorway, but it does remind me of my favorite Mizuno running singlet. It looks a little like this. What do you think? You see the similarity, right? Okay, enough of this. Okay, let's get into some specs. Now, there are a lot of changes between the version one and this, the version two, and I'm gonna talk about some of those versions today in passing, but I'm also gonna have a full length independent video where I just compare version two with version one. So let's get started with those specs. The Wave Rebellion Pro 2 has 38 millimeters in the heel, 36.5 millimeters in the forefoot for a one and a half millimeter drop. Now, I know what you're thinking. Some of you that like a higher drop shoe, I know there's not many of you out there, but some of you that like a higher drop shoe might think, Oh, Matt, 1.5 millimeters just isn't a lot, but I want you to take those thoughts with a pinch of salt because this geometry changes everything. And when you are running in the Wave Rebellion Pro 2, it's not like running in an ultra low drop or no drop shoe. Got it? Mizuno claims that a US men's size 9 will tip the scale at 7.6 ounces or 215 grams. That's a little reduction in weight over version 1, but in my size, a US men's size 13, the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 tips the scale at 9.7 ounces or 276 grams. And again, that is a slight reduction in weight over version 1 in my size. Now if I hold this up and you guys see the upper, this is like razor thin. This heel collar is non-existent. Well, it's obviously existent, but it's existent in its most minimal form. There is no padding around here. That's a little change over last year's version. Now we do have little sporadic pads here right in the back of the heel collar. We have one here. In fact, you can see them here on the back. One on each side. And I found that gave the back of my ankle enough grip to keep them in place. The heel counter, it's pretty much non-existent. We do have an overlay just covering the seam on the back and that gives it a little rigidity. But overall, I'd say that the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 does not have a heel counter. But you know what? I really didn't experience any heel slip. Now, what I have found in a lot of race day shoes when we have a minimal heel counter is that there is an overall feeling of looseness in the heel, even if there isn't any slip. So if we go from one end of the spectrum with a daily trainer that has a total rigid like heel counter made of cement that just grabs on the back of your heel and doesn't let go. And then we have the race day shoes that barely have anything and they just kind of lightly grab the back of your ankle, the back of your heel, and they don't hold on tightly, but they seem to hold on enough, at least for me. So much like other race day shoes that I've tested in the last year, I haven't found any issues with this lack of a heel counter in the Wave Rebellion Pro 2. Now I know you haven't noticed because I haven't zoomed in very much, but we do have some coordinates right here on the back. Can anyone guess where these coordinates lead to? Well, I would actually say hold your guesses because I'm going to tell you right now. When I put these coordinates into the internet mapping machine, it came out with the Mizuna headquarters in Osaka. And I've got to be perfectly honest, I didn't actually think of that when I put these coordinates in but as soon as I saw it it made perfect sense. I guess I was hoping for some kind of easter egg like Mizuno puts coordinates on the back of their shoe and then you travel to this location and you find a magical prize but maybe that's actually the case with the headquarters who knows. Okay the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 is using a very lightweight engineered mesh upper. It is super breathable and breathability is something that is very hard to get across on camera. I'm holding it up and looking at the screen and it actually doesn't look that breathable but when I'm looking at the shoe and I see these little cutouts I am able to look right inside the shoe. So there is no way your foot is overheating in this shoe. Of course, when I have been using the shoe, when I've been testing it, I've been testing it on my harder workout days. And because I live in a fairly warm area, I have soaked this shoe through. I have had to stuff it with newspaper, but that is more a product of the external environment. The shoe lets my foot breathe 
very well. There are minimal overlays on the Wave Rebellion Pro 2. We got some branding here on the lateral side. We've got a little bit of reinforcement coming down the eyelet chain. There is an underlay coming around the toe box just to keep that upper off your feet. There are some internal support structures on each side and then we have a larger midfoot band just coming down the midfoot lateral side. And Mizuna says that this midfoot band here is to suppress foot sway and to support efficient running. The tongue is not gusseted, it is absolutely micro thin. And much like on version one, the tongue is quite wide. In fact, when I put it in place, the side of the tongue comes down to about here. Now the same problem that I experienced on version one, I also experienced on version two. Just because this tongue is so thin, I have to take an extra five or 10 seconds to make sure that the tongue is seated right over the top of my foot. If I don't, I found that the tongue can kind of bunch up on the sides and that can create a hot spot on the top of my foot. But by taking those extra five or 10 seconds to just make sure that tongue is seated right, you avoid any of those problems. The tongue has a micro more amount of padding running down the center than it does on the sides. And that just helps to prevent those laces from biting into the top of your foot when you cinch them down. And version two does have a triple lace loop. And now we have one here at the lower center and then two on the upper on the sides so that tongue is not going anywhere the laces hold it in place didn't experience any tongue migration with the wave rebellion pro 2. oh before we get away from the upper and the laces there is no additional eyelet hole at the top of the eyelet chain so if you usually do the runner's knot in order to get a good heel lockdown you don't have that option with the wave rebellion pro but again for me i didn't experience enough heel slip where i needed to do that so it wasn't really an issue okay let's come down to the midsole because it seems like i see it with every shoes but this is where the magic happens and this is especially true with the wave rebellion Pro 2. Now just like the original Wave Rebellion Pro, we are using a dual density midsole setup. We have Mizuno's NZ Lite Plus on the top and Mizuno NZ Lite on the bottom. The Mizuno NZ Lite Plus is their top of the line pinnacle race day foam. It's cushioned, it's responsive, and there's 32% more of it in the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 over the Wave Rebellion Pro. Then sandwiched in between the NZ Lite Plus and the NZ Lite is their carbon infused nylon wave plate. You can see it peeking out both here on the lateral and the medial side. And this carbon infused nylon wave plate has been redesigned. And Mizuno claims that it increases the feel of snappiness by 600%. Now, I'm not entirely sure how they measure snappiness. Is there some kind of scale for that? But what I can say is that the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 does feel more snappy than the Wave Rebellion Pro. And when I got these shoes before I took them out for a run, I was actually, I don't, I don't know, I didn't really believe it. Because the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 are already very snappy. They're already very fast. But this redesigned carbon fiber plate in combination with the different stacks in the forefoot and the heel make that increased snappiness possible. Oh, they've also changed the angle of attack of the carbon fiber plate. And this isn't a scientific demonstration of how the angle of attack changed, but let's say the first version was like that. Well, version two, is like that. Now all these great ingredients, the midsole foam, the carbon infused nylon plate, they all work together in their special shape to form Mizuno's smooth speed assist geometry. And ultimately that geometry is what gives it this very distinctive look. I mean, this is the second version and I still look at this and think, wow. Okay, so if this is the first time you are seeing a video about the Wave Rebellion Pro or the Wave Rebellion Pro 2, let me give you a brief explainer of how they measure these midsole foams. So the World Athletics says that if you want to use a shoe for road racing, the thickness of the midsole foam cannot be any greater than 40 millimeters. Now the eagle eye of you may be looking at this shoe and thinking, Matt, that in the middle looks like a lot more than 40 millimeters. And you'd be absolutely right. World Athletics also says that that measurement of 40 millimeters has to be measured at 75% of the length of the shoe, which on this shoe is going to be right around here, which is not at its thickest point. Okay, let's come down to the outsole. Now I'll dig more into the changes between version one and version two in my comparison video, but Mizuno has made some big changes on version two. And most obviously we have a big midfoot groove running the length of the shoe. And this midsole groove and the width of the midsole increases stability and the ground contact area, which is going to make the ride a lot more stable than version one. And then of course we have the outsole rubber, which is Mizuno's G3 outsole rubber. And I've got to say, I've got no complaints on the grippiness. I have taken this shoe out in the rain and it performed like a champ. Of course I was running fast. I'm trying to scuff my feet just to see if I can get it to slip. It couldn't. The G3 outsole rubber handles like a champ on wet roads and of course on dry roads. My only complaint about the G3 outsole rubber, and I've noticed this on other Mizuno shoes, is that it's quite firm. And because it's firm, it's a little slappy. So you know when you're running, you you can actually hear your footfall hit the ground. That's what I get with the Wave Rebellion Pro 2. It was the same way with the Wave Rebellion Pro. And actually before that, with the original Wave Rebellion, I remember that same slappy sound from the G3 outsole rubber. But overall, that's really not a legitimate complaint. Just something I like to show in there so you're not surprised. So how does this shoe ride? Well, it rides very soft 
and extremely responsive. That is somewhat of an understatement. When you put the gas to this shoe, it just wants to go. Now, Mizuno does claim that the Wave Rebellion Pro 2, just like the Wave Rebellion Pro, is made for marathoners that are going to run a two hour and 30 minute marathon or faster. Now, this is a big thing to keep in mind because this is a race day shoe and it is tweaked and it has been designed for the fastest runners out there. However, with that said, I do not run a two hour and 30 minute marathon. I'm nowhere near that. But what I have found is that this shoe performs best when you are running fast. And I think the area of perfection for the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 is a very narrow area. And I would say it's the most narrow range of speeds of any of the super shoes out there. When you take this shoe out of the box and you walk around the house, it's a very strange feeling. You almost can't believe that this shoe is going to feel good on the run if you make that decision based by how it feels by just walking around your house. The same thing when you take it out and you're running easy. Now for me, most of my training runs start with a warm up, then I get into my workout. It's either intervals or it's a tempo or threshold pace. Then I have a couple of miles to cool down at the end. Now, just out of time constraints or sheer laziness, I always warm up and cool down in the same shoes that I do my workouts in. The Wave Rebellion Pro 2 is the one shoe that I think it would not be ideal to do that. When I'm running slow in the Wave Rebellion Pro, it almost feels like the shoe is holding me back. And that's because I am a heel striker. And I'm a heel striker, especially when I run slow. And I think you can tell just by looking at this shoe that it does not suit heel strikers well. You can see right here, because of the geometry, the heel is actually missing. So as a heel striker, if you do land in this area, there's a little resistance to overcome as you actually roll through your gait cycle. This is totally eliminated when you land midfoot or forefoot, and that's that's where the shoe comes into its own. So in summary, I would say that the Wave Rebellion Pro 2, when compared to the other super shoes on the market, this shoe is the most well-tuned to good running form, to good running economy. Now that's not to say it won't work for a lot of people that don't strike midfoot to forefoot. I certainly don't until I start picking up the pace. But because of how I run, this shoe, for me at least, is only suited when I am running at my fastest race speeds. That's why for me, the shoe is going to be best for the 5K, 10K, possibly up to the half marathon. But at the marathon, I really tend to get a bit of lazy towards the end when I start getting tired I start to heel strike a little more so just because of that the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 would really not work for me at the marathon distance so keep that in mind and I'd like to hear from you did you run in the Wave Rebellion Pro 2 have you looked at it and thought that you'd like to give it a go you know every time I look at this shoe it just occurs to me that it is a marvel of running shoe engineering it's a beautiful shoe it feels good on your feet when you're running fast it just doesn't translate to running slow which it shouldn't you wouldn't take a Formula 1 car down to the shops to pick up a loaf of bread so just like the the tools in your toolbox this one has a specific purpose all right guys thanks for staying all the way to the end of the video it's matt b this has been my review of mizuno's wave rebellion pro 2 be kind be happy run well I'll see you in a couple days